This is the Business Growth Hacks Podcast, presented by Beefy Marketing. Here's your host, Andrew Brockenbush. What's going on, small business nation? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Not John's not here with us today. This guy's on vacation and he deserves it because he's been hustling his face off lately. So, John, I hope you're enjoying your time in Colorado. I'm excited to be doing the show regardless because I'm always I'm trying to stick to it. We're trying to keep our schedule. You know, we make sure that we're, we're doing our things this year. But we've got a great guest lined up for you guys. But I'm going to do things like I always do. I'm going to kick things off with an icebreaker. Let's, let's kick it. Ice, icebreaker. All right, Brent, if you could have any fictional character as your best friend, who would it be and why? Definitely Batman, man. I just want to drive right. his car, ride his motorcycle, be his friend. You know, that's I think that's that's enough reasons, right? That's a hundred percent. I feel like you chose the most wholesome, probably the most wholesome hero, like superhero, if you will. Because yeah. I was thinking about this earlier this morning. I was like, man, who would I go with? And my you know, first one is uh, you know, Tony Stark. But it's like, man, yeah. he's kind of he's pretentious. A dick, he's a dick. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's yeah. like, I don't know if I want to be his best friend. I just want to be around that technology sphere of influence, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So then I thought, well, Homer Simpson would be kind of funny. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we'd have a beer. We'd be fatter than heck. <laughs> yeah. Donuts, beer. It would be a good time. So I think that, uh, man, also, also, if I were going to throw another one out in the ring, I'd say Sherlock Holmes. Again, another kind of guy that's kind of a dick, but super inquisitive, very smart. Like, I feel like he'd bring a lot of value to your life. You know, I just feel stupid all the time around him. Like, <laughs> I, I just don't feel, think I feel very good about myself. That's why Batman you doesn't say much. <laughs> yeah, know? true, true. I'd That's be talking all the time. Batman would be like, "Shut up, shut up, shut up." <laughs> what? <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, hey guys, let me do a quick formal introduction for you guys. Brent Bowers is an investor and coach with a focus on buying and selling vacant land. As an army officer with over eight years of service, Brent was spending a great deal of time away from his family, and he knew he needed to make a, some. He need, obviously needed to make some changes in order to be more present with his wife and children. Brent began investing in real estate as a way to support his family while having more time to spend with them. In a short period of time, Brent was able to expand his business, hire a team, and still had more time to spend with his family. Brent now helps other investors learn the ins and outs of buying land. Brent, welcome to the show, man. Man, man, I'm excited, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm it already. Yeah, this is, I mean, I think this is going to be a good one. So I want to preface this conversation by saying I've got a huge audience of veterans, uh, you know, f- in terms of like on my social page and my following from doing my, my, my time, if you will, on the Team Never Quit podcast with Marcus Luttrell. And so this episode goes out to all the veterans out there specifically that are looking for some type of career or um, advice for that transition, right? Because I know from all the, over the years, the, the, one of the biggest topics that came up was what happens when you get out? Like, right? Like what, where's purpose? And so this episode, episode I kind of want to dedicate to those guys. Hopefully they can learn some stuff out of this episode, but also all you business owners out there listening. I think there's a lot of value here in what we're going to talk about today. So let's jump right in. So first of all, I got to just start. What inspired you to join the army? You know, it was out of a uh, lack of, that's, I mean, it's out of scarcity. I, well, let me back up a little bit. Take I always back. wanted to be a real estate investor. I never wanted to join the military, okay. ever. I was like, there's no way I can do that. I was a business owner. Um, I started a lawn business when I was in like fifth grade. Okay. Um, I mean, I was like, always, like, I always appreciated the military, but I just never saw myself doing it. Sure. Well, 2007, I got my real estate license. I bought a rental property. I was like, I'm going to make it big. Got rid of my company left, moved to the coast, rented that house out and was basically homeless very shortly after because like I couldn't afford to pay my rent and I was married. Um, so I had to eat humble pie and move in with my <laughs> in-laws into a 900 square foot house. Now Dang. there's four grown adults sharing one bathroom and a small child there. Not my kid, my wife's, uh, my <laughs> not ex-wife, not my kid, <laughs> ex-wife's younger sister, baby sister, I should say. And it was just a very awkward time. And luckily her, I really looked up to her grandpa. You know, he was in sales. He did really well. He introduced me to a guy named Jim Rohn, not personally, but through the cassette tapes that I transferred to CD so I could actually listen to this guy <laughs> nice. going down the road. And I turned my, uh, my truck into like a mobile university. Um, but really, he also told me another very valuable thing was, Brent, you can reset. Like you're going through a tough time right now. It's 2008, early 2009 in the real estate industry. 
you can go back to school, join the military, go join the air force and go to school. So I did it. I did it that next, that next day, really. And I went down to the recruiter's office um, the Air Force basically didn't want me. <laughs> they said, go to the Army. They'll take anybody. So I'm coachable. And here we are. <laughs> That's great. So you actually started off because, you know, I guess I have it backwards here. So I'm actually intrigued. So you started off more entrepreneurial and then you went to the Army. It wasn't the other way around. Yeah. And I, now that entrepreneurial, that entrepreneurial bug never went away. Yeah. I mean, basic training, I was pulling fire guard shifts for other guys, making money. <laughs> Make I had like, I had bills. I was behind on payments. So I'm like making like money, pulling fire guard shift. Like I was making beds. I can do like a hospital full, like no other. I was ironing dress blues and class A's <laughs> um, and AIT. And then I literally like sold cigarettes in Afghanistan. I would go, we would go, I would go off the fob and buy cartons from the Afghans and come back and sell them to my buddies. Like I always had something. Yeah, you had that on. spirit. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's really cool. You said something a second ago that really like just like spoke to me and stood out. And I think everyone could take something away from that is like the fact that you took your truck and turned it into a mobile university. People always talk about, you know, I don't have enough time to to like start a hustle or I don't have time to, you know, start a business or, or learn something new. I mean, I'm working all the time. If you travel in your vehicle at any point to and from work, there are so many books that you can listen to on places like audible. There's podcasts that you can get a ton of value from. Like there's no excuse to not learn what you want to do. That's, that's my opinion. So I just, I don't know. That stood out to me what you said there. Yeah, man. Always, always. I ran a couple miles this morning. Like I wasn't listening to no freaking music. Yeah. Like, that there's a time and a place for that. Like, sure. yeah, I listen to music when me and my wife are going down the road and like, that's when it's a good time. But when it's just me I, in the truck or running or working out, like I'm learning something like, you know, I, I probably should be focusing on my workout, but no, I'm enjoying the workout as well as learning something at yeah. the same time. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. So you spent eight years in the army. Is that right? Yep, eight and a half years. So does that put, time. that puts you like what two years, one and a half years shy of a career? No, no, twenty years would have been a career. Twenty years of career. Okay, all right, fair, fair. So I mean, it's a long. You still spent a fair amount of time in there, man. That's yeah, that's, that's that good. Was a good time. It, it went by like a blink of an eye. So when you were obviously when you were in the army, was that when you kind of re got back into real estate, or was it after you left? Yeah. So a lot of things happened. I did that first one year deployment to Afghanistan and then did another one. I was like, ah, oh, that tech one's going to be no, no, no joke. It's going to be, it's just a big joke. Like it's going to yeah. be a breeze. Whatever. Well, my wife, my first wife left me like a month into that uh -huh. and like didn't take my calls. Um, like all these things. And like, I was just like, you know, going through a tough time. It's like, sure. fine, I'm doing well. And I, I was putting in these applications to become green to gold. Basically what that means is the army was going to select like 150 active duty soldiers a year to go to college. My, the previous year I got denied and then I finally got accepted to this thing. Um, and like had to go through that divorce and all that. So the army pulled me out of my second deployment, moved me to Florida. Um, and I bought the house next to the college and started house hacking. Um, basically I was renting the rooms out and making money to live there. And that just reinvigorated my real estate passion. And I bought another rental down the street. Basically I refinanced that house because I bought it with my VA loan, put yeah. no money in, no money down and then put a little money into it, fixed it up, rented out the rooms and refinanced like two months later and pulled out 55,000 and bought another rental. And then I met the beautiful Emily that I'm married to now, my wife. Um, and then we, you know, got married, moved across the country. Like the army moved me several times, becoming the army officer and training. And then we moved to Fort Carson, Colorado. And I was whole, I, I started kind of wholesaling houses because I was like, I, I need to get out of the military. I want to get out of the military. Like I'm preparing for combat deployment number three. I'm going to be away for like a year to train up for this, plus another nine months during the deployment. And like, we literally had our first baby in January of 2016. And I was like, I've got to find an answer. So I was yeah. listening to podcasts just like this business, business growth hacks, reading the four hour work week, right. listening Same. to it on Audible. <laughs> and then I heard a podcast. I cannot tell you what podcast it was on, but it was a guy that was buying land and flipping it and doubling his money overnight, overnight on land. No one was talking about land. No. I'm like, what is the catch here? There's no way it could be that easy because I racked up a ton of debt mailing homeowners, trying to fight for these stinky old dirty cat pee houses. Yeah. 
but I mail the tax delinquent list on landowners, like literally landowners that were behind on their taxes, and my phone started blowing up. And here we are today. That's okay. So I'm I'm excited about this conversation for a lot of reasons. One, because I feel like your story obviously speaks to the veteran community that they can they can make something after the military, right? Whatever that whatever that path may be. But specifically, we're going to kind of dive into the real estate piece, which I'm kind of, you know, I always joke that the greatest part about being a podcaster is I get to learn secrets from the the top minds and I don't have to pay for that advice. So selfishly, I'm excited to learn too, because I've always wanted to invest in real estate. But to be honestly, to honestly, it kind of feels, you know, um, out of reach or uh, unapproachable. It just feels scary, right? It's like high risk, obviously high reward, but that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I think I think maybe you could probably break some myths there in terms of like how hard is it really to get into it and you know just kind of all of that so like let's kind of go back there what what would you say is like the first step to diving into this world yeah i'll tell you like you know how i started was i got a list of tax delinquent landowners from the county it was the county tax delinquent list we have to pay property taxes the counties don't make any money They don't have any revenue except people paying their property taxes. So I got a list from the county treasurer out in Colorado, a list of people that were not paying their real estate taxes. And then basically I found someone on, or it was actually on uh, upwork.com. I paid them $5 an hour to scrub this list. Basically she plugged schedule numbers. Another word for that is assessors, partial numbers into the property appraisers website or the, the real estate appraiser. or yeah the county appraiser or the assessor's website. I'm, tr- I'm trying to say multiple words. Yeah. <laughs> because some counties are different. Different, got um, it. So some counties call it the tax collector, like Florida, uh, like Colorado, they call it the county treasurer. Got um, it. So the assessor's website is basically the, all the property information in that county. So she was plugging those numbers in and getting the person's name and their mailing address and how big the land was, if it was a mobile home or a house that we, were, we just got rid of all that. And I only mailed a postcard and this was me starting now things have changed a little bit sure yeah they've evolved a little bit better systematized and easier scalable um but i mailed a postcard and said hey my name is brent i'd like to buy your land at 123 main street most of them didn't even have an address so i had to say like el paso county colorado if you're interested in the all cash fair price offer call me or text me god bless you um, and then my phone number. And I had a couple people call. The first one that was, uh, he was a retired CPA, like a certified public accountant. Yeah. He was just retired. Like he no longer wanted to pay the back taxes on the land. He's like, Brent, if you want it, to, it's yours for $285. I almost dropped the phone. I remember where I was at. I was hiding in the bathrooms because uh, I was on base. <laughs> and I, I like, like, you're not really supposed to have another business no, in the military. Not, not technically, um, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was secretly doing it. Um, so anyhow, I was like, okay, sir, let me go look at the land this weekend. If you if you can wait just a few days, because I was like two hundred eighty five dollars. Like, I can. Me in why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a it was a it was a definitely a stretch because we had just had our first baby and I we had just moved across the country. We got bought that new house. Yeah, so it was tight. Was Things were like, tight. Yeah. Oh my god, like tight. Like I was squeaking. I was <laughs> I was so tight. Um, so anyhow, and I had a lot of debt on my rental properties too. Like I was like over my head in this. Like I wasn't making any money. Crap. St- things kept breaking. Like it was literally, I created myself another job, even though I had property managers and they're calling me about these rental properties. It was a mess. So I go and look at the land, me, my wife, and one of my army officer friends, and he's like all in the stock market telling me how stupid I was um, for buying this land. <laughs> but I was like, I had no clue what it's worth. So Let's I called the real estate office right down the street. And here's the whole thing. You, you had mentioned like, Someone might be afraid to get into this. Too yeah. much risk, too much money. I'm giving you the story to tell you, like, if if this guy can do it, that could barely graduate high school and couldn't even get in the Air Force, <laughs> anybody can do this. So I call the real estate office down the hill from this land. The land's beautiful. I was like, what the heck? What is the catch? What's the catch? Yeah. Yeah. The catch was the land's not buildable. You can't build on the land because there's only one road in, one road out. So the fire chief won't allow anybody to build because the firefighters can get pinned down and the, and basically like there's no other way except for over the railroad tracks and the city had to approve like a million dollar, you know, whatever bridge to go yeah. over it. So I call the real estate office 
And I was like, hey, what do you think this land's worth? Like, what's the get or done now price? What what could you sell this for me if you were to list this property and put it on the multiple listing service? Like, I want a 30-day blowout price. Like, don't, don't screw around because I can't leave my money in this land deal that I'm about to buy. She goes, maybe 10000 uh, Again, I almost dropped my phone. Like, <laughs> I was like, maybe? okay, let me buy it. <laughs> I'll call you back as soon as I own it because I'm buying it for $285. I can sell it for ten grand. I was like, this is the best deal I've ever done. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like telling my wife what, what she just told me. And she calls me right back and makes me an offer for $5,000 to buy it for me right now. And I was like, let's do it. Like, I know she was lowballing me. Yeah, but, but I don't care. Like, that changed my life. Like, that's like a 3,000% return on investment. Yeah. And I, I literally called the seller. I was like, hey, um, I've got it sold already. <laughs> They're going to pay me on Wednesday. Can I pay you on Tuesday, the day before? Literally, I, we did it. I got the deed. I brought it to the title company. The title company called me the next day and I went and picked up my $5,000 certified check. And that deal, like, I was like, there's no way this can keep working like this. Yeah. And they just kept happening and happening. The next one was $500. I bought that one, sold that for $500 down and 400 a month. That's the one that changed my life because it was giving me payments. It yeah. was covering my truck payment. That's amazing. So, okay. So there's a lot of skeptics out there, right? Yeah. Including myself, totally. right? It still feels too good to be true, right? Yeah. But clearly you've made a whole career out of this. So it can't be completely too good to be true. So would you say even now in 2023 or whenever people are listening to this podcast, maybe year 2030, is there still property and land out there that you think people can steal for these kind of deals? Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at my board right here. Me and one of my land, one of my sharks, I call them the land sharks. sharks we yeah. created a community. <laughs> called the land sharks and me and one of my sharks are buying 11 parcels of land in hawaii for eighty two thousand dollars total we're okay. hopefully closing any day now and we should be able to sell them for a little over one hundred ninety thousand. that's the low end yeah like wow. we're looking bare bones like blowout prices you know i'm buying another uh, one hundred forty thousand dollar property um and we can sell it for about 280. now a lot of people are probably thinking how the heck does he get the money for this like yeah that, that was my next start, question <laughs> i literally had no money when i started out so that first that second one that i did for 500 dollars, like i got that 500 dollars from that five thousand i just made yeah well, technically i made like i don't know four thousand something, something dollars if yeah. you subtract what i paid for it i can't do that math on here I need a calculator. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I took that money and then I bought another parcel for 500 and then I sold it that following Sunday. It was several days later for 500 down and 400 a month. So I got my money back out of that deal and 30 days later I was profitable. So land is profitable from day one and forever if you do this right. So another deal that was brought to me, someone that heard me on a podcast just like this brought me this deal It's and I just got the drone photos yesterday and we're having a guy on Fiverr. For 15 bucks, he's doing a rendition of this house on stilts overlooking nice. the Indian River in Florida. So we got this land under contract. So we got it under contract for 150 something thousand dollars. Now, I don't want to say the exact price because we're sure. still in the process. Of yeah. It. <laughs> um, we just, so the seller's giving us six months, six months, uh, like 180 days to find our buyer and is allowing us to put it on the MLS. And basically what we're doing is we're offering it to our buyer for 250000 The seller is going to let us make payments for 15 years to him at 5% interest. And we're going to allow our buyer to make payments to us for 30 years at 12% interest. Wow. So our payment is going to be about 2200 a month. We're going to pay our seller 1100 a month. We're going to keep the difference plus sell it for hundred grand more. Like we should make over $600,000 net profit on that deal. And there's not a penny of my own money into it. That's amazing. So do, let me ask you this. Do you think somebody that's just getting into it should take that approach or should they do more of the quick flips to get the cash that they need to kind of do more of those better longer term to some extent yes. riskier, you know, because obviously you're kind of, a lot of trust, right? Yeah, it depends. Like I have some, like I'm working with some guys that just got out of the military. One guy's got like a hundred and hundred thousand dollars in savings. Like he can buy like 20,000 worth of land and turn that 20,000 and to, and to 60,000 plus get payments plus interest. Sometimes I collect more in interest than I do what we sell the, than sell I, what it, I sell yeah. the land for. Yeah. Cause I'm using the bank's method. The banks are the reason there's a, the biggest, prettiest buildings in every city and every state is because yep. they know how to make money. They got and that they money. They relend that money. <laughs> yep. So they make babies and those babies make more babies. Like they're like yep. rabbits, but it's, we're used looking at money. <laughs> exactly. So, 
that person that's got that kind of money, like that's coming out that has some money to, to work with, then you can do both. Like I recommend the passive income because like this changed my life. I did not get into to land to become a multimillionaire. Did it happen? Yes, it did. But I got into land was to get out of the military. I was running from a problem. I didn't want another woman to leave me. This time there was kids yeah, involved. Yeah. I wanted to be home more often. Like yesterday, my son got in a fight on the playground at like noon, which not cool. Like, but he, he was like, he wasn't backing down, but I was able to stop what I was doing and go to his school. Like if I was in the military, that never would have happened. happened. Yeah. And that could have been a so, pivotal moment of learning for that, for your kid, for your son. Right. Because yeah. if you've not been there, it was just your, you know, your wife or just the school apprehending him, then what would his path look like? Because he doesn't have yeah. that, that, you know, exactly. Person That's look up so to. true. Yeah. I didn't think about all that, Andrew. That is brilliant. I didn't think, and the principal, he's a prior Marine. He's like, man, you, the whole crew came down because my wife was there. I was there. Like we both showed up like, listen, like we don't want you fighting in school. We don't want you to get kicked out of school, but we like, we care about this. Sure. Um, so I wouldn't have done, been able to do that if I was in the military. And like most of it, like I think his uh, teachers think I'm some kind of bomb, honestly. I'm always in like shorts and flip flops. <laughs> Chilling. They don't know what the heck I do. But uh, going back to it, how should the person getting started? Like it depends what your financial situation is. Like I, I teach multiple different ways. There's a million ways you can do this. But if we want to talk about like Alana Cohen, she's a single mother of four children. She lives in New Jersey, one of the toughest real estate markets in the country, just did her fifth land deal. She's done a mixture. I think her first two were like assignment of contract. What that means is like she got the property under contract on a piece of paper for like 25,000 for the land, which is probably more than that because it was New Jersey. I'm just using an example. Yeah. And assigned her contract, sold her contract for 35,000. So basically she had it under contract with the seller for 25,000. She sold it to a cash buyer for thirty five thousand. She kept the difference between thirty five and twenty five, which is ten grand. Yeah. So there's a way you could build up your bank account. She's done now five of those, um, where I think her fourth or third one is getting her about eleven hundred dollars a month in income. It's amazing. So she's she's done kind of a like a hybrid mixture, and I do the same thing. Yeah. This is, so this next question is a little loaded because it's one, it's one of those questions. It's like well, it depends on your market and everything else, but. I guess just high level, how much, you know, how much money do you need to at least be like, okay, we can entertain, we can entertain this idea. Right. Cause it's like, if you have 30 bucks, maybe, maybe you're not ready yet. Right. Unless yeah. you've got a buyer and seller lined up already before you've ever gotten to it. And maybe you can't. Right. Oh, you mean to buy the land or to get, yeah, the to, just, to just get into it, to buy that land, to be able to do that. How much money yeah, should you I have? Mean, till, still to this day, even though that I have money and savings, and we paid off our debt. I still don't buy all the land myself. Yeah. Like I'll go in with partners. I'll get the property under contract and assign my contract. It just depends what it is. Um, so it, you can do any, like any of this. Like, um, I bought 122 parcels with a partner and he's getting 30% of the profit on it. Now, that's quite a bit, actually. I don't, I didn't have to give that much away, but I was just getting started. But here's what's really cool is that didn't cost me a single penny of my own money. And that brought other deals. Like people saw I was buy I was able to take down that many parcels of land. They started sending me other deals. Yeah, that's amazing. Because they thought I was somebody. They were like, like okay, yeah, yeah, here you guy. go. Man, yeah, he's, holy he's making a move. Yeah. So the the next part that would intimidate me, and I think other people out there would be, well, I don't know how to do the contracts. I don't know anything about sales. I don't know how to negotiate. I don't know anything about the broker process or the closing process or, you know, like that part starts to become a little scary, right? What kind of yeah. resources, and I'm sure that that's exactly what you've created, but what kind of resources exist for people that are just getting started? Yeah, there's a million ways to do it. There's free resources out there. You can Google land contract your state. Like there, you can pull that for free. Heck, use my contract. Go to the landsharks.com forward slash contract. Uh, like we talked about that postcard, the landsharks.com forward slash postcard. Like I will give you this stuff for free. You can get started. Like we just got a, a, a guy came in uh, from EOD. Like he, he's in the Navy EOD program. And like he's doing this on the side while like he's still in the Navy. 
Um, so, you know, there's so many ways you can do it, but it's just taking action. Like we don't know the answers tomorrow. Like there's a reason why our headlights only go out 200 feet in front of our car. Yeah. At night. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Hey, okay. Another question for you. And I think this is a really important one. How, okay. So I know my area, for example, I've actually done some research on the very topic we're talking about finding land that there's back property taxes on in my specific area. The problem I found is that there's not a lot in my specific town. And yeah. what I have found is really, really expensive because I'm in a more, I mean, I'm right outside of the city of Houston. So, I mean, it's just expensive out this way, right? How do you get into going outside of your own comfort zone or you're outside of your own kind of local area and knowing before you get out there that you bought something that's worth a damn, like, how do you, how do you do that? Yeah. I mean, some of my best sharks making the most money are actually in Texas. Uh, outside of Houston. And, you know, here's the thing that tax delinquent list runs out very quickly. Sure. You know, that's a very small list. I, that's how I started. I still do deals off of that list, but that's not the only list we're, we're working on because they, they run out pretty quickly. But, you know, I, a lot of people that I work with, a lot of my sharks, like it's about a mindset issue. It's just giving you the steps to take, the action steps to take, the confidence and the permission. Because like, again, if I can do this, anybody could do this. I could barely graduate high school. Like, but here's what, what's different from me compared to most people. I just took the freaking action. Yeah. I took the steps. I didn't care if I messed up or if I lost money because I didn't have any money. I didn't care if I messed up because I was already like, I was already embarrassed. Like I was basically like, you couldn't hurt me. And I, I'll tell you lately, I've been getting a little bit risk adverse. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I've been getting a little comfortable, like I wake up cause my back's hurting because my bed's too fluffy. Like, here's the thing. Like you just got to go out there and just freaking get, a, get a little uncomfortable. And like, no one wants to be uncomfortable, but like we're humans. We like, we, we, we strive for, to be comfortable. And that's the biggest problem. Is we yep. just got to take those steps. Everyone's like, what if I get stuck with the land? What if you don't even buy the land? What if, what if like I had you a buyer waiting, beating down your door and you're like, oh my God, you're like going to rush your seller just to get the land. Yeah. Like, like what if we turn that around? Um, I heard a Trevor mock use an example the other day. He's like, everyone's like so worried about what if this happens? What if I lose money? What if people think I'm a failure? What if I lose someone else's money? Well, what if you don't take the steps Yeah, and you don't accomplish what, like, like most of the things we worry about never happen, but what if you just stay, you know, doing what you're going to do for the rest of your life and working for someone else for 30 years and building someone else's company for, for however many years, like I saw my dad do that. Yep. He made his boss wealthy and he has no retirement, no nothing, but he made someone else very, very wealthy. Yeah, that, I mean, honestly, you think about it, that's one of the first discovery questions I ask anytime I'm talking to a prospect is what happens if you don't change what you're already doing? Like, what's going to happen? Are you, is it going to be detrimental? Like, you're going to close the doors next year? Or does it mean you're going to have to lay off 10 of your employees? Or does it mean you won't be able to add that extension you want to your business so you can do this other service line? Like, what is the consequence of not taking risk, of changing things, making a difference? So I, I think that speaks volumes to really any business owner, anybody out there, if you're not, it's so funny. You said something that's like really like just kind of rolling in my mind right now, which is we work so hard when we're uncomfortable to get comfortable. And then we're like living in that like dream and we're like, yeah, everything's great. But then what happens? We start becoming complacent, right? Because it's like, everything's going well. We don't have to work as hard. We don't have to, right? Like it just, it happened to me recently. I parted ways with a client. We lost a little bit of revenue kind of by, by design, and I was like, oh shit, I've been so comfortable for so long because the bank account was full that I stopped hustling as hard, right? I wasn't out there like doing the same grind I was doing when I was like, oh shit, how am I going to run payroll, right? And so I think when you think with that scarcity mindset, sometimes it'll push you to be a better leader, a better CEO, a better worker, a better coworker, whatever you want to call it. I think it's going to make you be a better overall well-rounded entrepreneur in general. Yeah. And, and those that are listening to this are like, well, that's not me. I'm not too comfortable. Like, I'm sure there's probably some people <laughs> listening to this thinking, holy crap. Yeah, that's me. 
But if you're thinking, oh, that's not me. I'm too comfortable. Like, okay, what time do you get up in the morning? Are you sleeping in? <laughs> like, do you have to be at work at nine and you're not getting up until eight? Then yep. you are that guy that's too, being too comfortable right now. <laughs> Yeah, or or the or the guy that we talked about earlier. You know, hey, I I worked all day. I don't have time to learn. I don't have time to do this thing or take this course or no. That's bullshit. Like bottom line, like I'm not saying you have to be one of these crazy you know people that says like, oh, you you don't need eight hours of sleep. Like, hey, get your sleep. Like that's cool. But like you can make time. Like people make time for what's important to them. Somebody just called me out on a few episodes ago. I was telling him that I was like struggling to lose weight. It's one of these things I've kind of dealt with my whole life. I'll lose weight, gain it, lose it, gain it. It's just like this constant battle. And he's like, bro, if you were going to do it for yourself, you would have done it a long time ago. He's like, you're not going to do it for yourself clearly, or you would have already done it. He's like, so you need to find your why. You need to find why you're going to do it. Are you going to find who you're going to do it for? Because you're not doing it for yourself. And I was like, damn, like that kind of stings a little bit, right? Like, but, but it's true. And I think that that applies to anybody in any experience, it's not just about losing weight. It's about starting a business or, you know, uh, I don't know, investing in investing in land, whatever it may be. Sometimes you just have to get uncomfortable. That's the bottom line. No, I love that, man. That's so true. I heard Ed Milet. Um, he wrote uh, Maxing Out and also another book called The Power of One More. I'm looking at it on my shelf over here. But he talked about that kind of like what you were saying, like he realized he was super unhealthy um, and he thought about his daughter, I um, forget his daughter's name, Missy or something like that. He, he was like, I want to be there to see her walk down the aisle. Mm. And that touched me cause I've got a daughter as well. And he's, he does it for her. And here's the thing, you know, we, since this is podcast with a lot of veterans, we called it the two finger diet when we were in the military, yeah. you know? <laughs> stick your finger down your throat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hear you, <laughs> man. So, okay. I want to pivot just a little bit and we can get back onto the, the investing side here in a second, but from a business owner perspective, there was a moment where you had to truly make that full transition out of the military into this new career that you kind of re, re found some new passion for. One of the scariest things about business ownership is scaling or growth or moving too fast or moving too slow. The chicken or the egg, which came first? Like, when do you hire the first employee? When do you just do it yourself? All that shit. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like, when did you make that change and what was that like? Yeah, 2018. I haven't had a job since 2018, but I'll tell you that first, whew, that first, uh, <laughs> luckily I got a, what's the, the army allowed me a three month internship. Thank God. If it wasn't for that. I probably would have had a heart attack because, <laughs> you know, so that's the one thing you can apply for. Like when you're doing your ACAP process, figure out about that internship. Um, so basically I went and worked for a company and they were so chill. I was actually wholesaling ink. They actually allowed me to kind of build my business on the side, did, did a couple of things just to satisfy the military. Um, but that first month I was like a psycho like my, I was driving my wife nuts. <laughs> like I was working like 12 hour days. Cause I was like, I'm out and literally my paycheck ends in three months. Like I was freaking what out because, <laughs> you know, even though I had built up my land business to about $9,000 a month coming in and payments, I was still a maniac. That was more than what I was earning in the military. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the heck I was thinking, but I finally started to calm down about 30 days into that, that, um, internship. And the first month I was out May, I had a $55,000 net profit month. And I remember like, th like thanking God, like, okay, like this was the right decision. I'm going to be able to feed my family. Cause I was worried, like we were going to get kicked out of yeah. the house and go in <laughs> foreclosure, all these negative, negative things like that keep you up at night. You know, they call it the sleepless nights. That was so scary. Yeah. Um, so I just prepared though. A lot of people are like, okay, when I get out of the military or when I quit this job, I'll start the next career. No, there needs to be some overlap because yeah. like us humans, like it takes us a while to get, you know, adapt to certain other things. Yeah. I think it, Marcus on the, on the team never quit podcast always used to joke about how many months it takes to transition to the military. There should be that many to transition out of the military. Right. And it's like that, that is so true. Like, I, obviously I'm not a veteran, but I've spent a lot of I mean, three years worth of every single week interviewing veterans. I mean, that is something that was tried and true for every single one of them was like, there needs to be a program for 
the transition out. And there's, I mean, there is loosely, but not good enough, not long enough. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think you're exactly right, man. You need to have some overlap there. I never, I never thought about that. Marcus is definitely right. You know, I think it took me about six months to transition into the military life, you know, between basic training and AIT and just kind All of that. getting that. Yeah. <laughs> Literally it is brainwashing. Yes. <laughs> but I think it took me longer to transition out. Like, um, because you know, I had this thing of like, I got to go to work. I got to go to an office to work. I got to be away. Literally. If I think it took me a couple of years because we find, I finally got used to working from home, you know, recently. Yeah. I've been working from home now for about two years. And let me tell you, it is a, best freaking thing ever <laughs> like you know I, like i i'm not going to get into all the benefits sure but, uh, like, i see my wife now like we have like lunch and like whatever um so like it's amazing and for the longest time i thought i had to strap on boots and literally when i lived in in colorado we we lived on 58 acres in the middle of nowhere i'm now in florida we moved to be closer to family because I was like, oh crap, I can do this from anywhere in the world. Yeah. Live anywhere, deals everywhere. So I was driving, I bought an office in Colorado Springs, bought an office, and my stupid butt would drive two hours round trip every day in a 3,500 dually diesel truck. And I was just burning like burning like $100 it. every two days <laughs> yeah. just because I thought I, like, I think it was that military, like, yeah, yeah. brainwash. Get up, I yeah. thought I had to go somewhere every day. Yeah, I literally just kind of reframed how even my, so I am a kind of person that likes going into the office because I feel like I get that like team morale and like I like having the people around me because it kind of pushes me to do things that I wouldn't like to not think the way I would normally think and that kind of thing. But it started becoming kind of tolling. I was like, shit, I went from for the last I mean, I've been in business for 10 years. The first eight years was pretty much all like asynchronous, like we all worked from our own spots. And then like two years ago, we bought this office building because we were like, oh, it'd be really cool to be together. You know, it's like post COVID. So you really need some like people time. And then now I'm like, God dang, I'm driving an hour both ways. Like this kind of blows. And so we literally switched. So now everybody on the team, I literally gave them the ability to work from home on Mondays. So everyone works from home Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we come in the office, Friday, we come in the office, but only for half a day, which has actually been badass because at the end of our half day Fridays, we usually go play tennis, grab beers. Like we just go do something as a team. So it really has created like this insane culture, you know, within our organization. But, but for the same exact reason, like I needed that time where it's like, man, I don't, I don't want to burn through because I drive a big old diesel truck too, man. So it's like, I was just burning through diesel, man. Like I fill up my truck for like 120 bucks, like every three yeah. or four days. And it's just like, this is stupid, man. Like I'm just yeah. throwing money yeah. away basically. And part of that's my no, fault. We rented the office you know? out, you know, <laughs> I feel your pain. Like we totally rented it out, canceled the coffee subscription, all the snacks. <laughs> I know, man. I was like so much more profitable. Like, cause now it's like, we're getting money for this asset. That's right. Like actually cash flow, and Like, cause no one was going to the office except for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we literally have talked about that. We're like, okay, the, the problem we have is that we produce a lot of podcasts in our studios in house. But I was like, okay, if we ever stop that, we'll probably rent this place out, free up, a you know, $3,000 a month turn that into like profits into the business. And I'm like, you know, sometimes I'm like, Hey guys, we're just gonna have to stop podcasting because you know, we would just, you know, but it's been, it's been fun, man. Like it's a, it's a balance for sure. And, uh, I, I really do like the fact that like we can have a little bit of both, you know, work from home, work from the yeah. office, but it would be nice to save some money. That's for sure. But how about for people getting into this or, or, or considering, right. At what point do you need to hire people? At what point will it get beyond yourself? Yeah, when I was in the military, like I hired someone immediately. I hired that virtual assistant to help me scrub those lists and to help me get my mail go going out every every week, whether I was training on vacation, which I didn't take vacations ever back then. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I'm just pre pretending like I did, I guess. Um, and then I had to hire Jen. She's still with me today. Uh, I hired her April, 2016 because, you know, I would send out all these letters and these postcards and then we'd be going to the field and guess what? Like we can't take phones to the field. Like we're like doing battlefield simulations. Like the phones don't work in the mountains of Afghanistan, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, uh, like I would miss out on it, all these phone calls and I just spent like hundreds of dollars on this mail. So I had to hire Jen and Jen started taking the call. She would go meet with these sellers because uh, we were also doing houses back then. But 
the land was way easier because we weren't having to meet with sellers. Now we send them, we've, we've gotten better at this. So now we actually go to areas where we see demand, where land is actually selling. How do you, how do you find that? Zillow and Redfin, like these are free, free resources yep. we all have access to. You don't have to have a licensed real estate agent to do this. And we now mail those areas where we're seeing the demand, where land's selling. And we mail them a very specific offer letter. We call it the land offer letter, the LOL. Um, and they actually get an offer price for that land. How do you figure out what the land's worth? Again, I just mentioned, like Zillow, go to Redfin and, yeah. and Zillow, look at the exact size parcel that's selling, figure out what it's selling for, figure out what size parcel selling and mail those people. Like you can get a free seven day trial to a prop stream. If you go to the land sharks list, Dot com. You can pull a list of 50 landowners in the area of Houston or Austin or just outside of the city limits where land is selling because you can figure out what it's selling for and send them the land offer letter. Uh, guys, if anybody wants that land offer letter, we've been triple split testing this. It's working better than those postcards that I was using in the very beginning. Just go to the landsharks.com forward slash LOL <laughs> land offer letter. That's awesome, man. It sounds like you guys have created some really impressive resources for people like it goes back to the beginning of our conversation in a great way to kind of like sum it all up like there's no excuses like there's so much free content out there like I, yeah. me personally people are always like so do you have a marketing degree andrew no i have a bachelor's in music production that i've never used i have a bachelor's in music production like i'm not in here making music i mean there's some there's some harmonies like around music. here i'm podcasting it's a microphone mm -hmm. I mean, it's close enough right but I've learned everything I know, trial and error, YouTube videos, podcasts, like there is so much great content out there and that's what you guys have put together for people. So I think that's a great transition into like a bit of a plug here. Like, why don't you talk a little bit about the Land Sharks program? Can you tell people what that is? Who is it for? Is it for only veterans? Is it for real estate investors? Is it for, I mean, who, who's your audience? Is it everybody? Onlyveterans.com. <laughs> no. um, no, it's for it's for anybody really looking to get started that wants the actual steps to take. It's action driven. Like the videos aren't long. Like they're action steps. Like I'm going to tell you exactly the step to take to pick a market. The exactly the steps to take to figure out where the demands at. The exact steps to take to finding and pricing that list and how to mail that list out. What to say when they sign that thing and send it back. How to find the buyers for this land. How to build a list of buyers that are basically waiting for you to find the land for them. Um, and then we have support calls weekly, like literally like we, we jump on the calls and we, we break down deals. I'm ringing the bell, like we're, we're, like, we're like celebrating wins, you know, and we've got, we've got my assistant coach and guys, like I want you to take action right now. Yeah. Go to the landsharks.com, schedule a call, fill out that form, fill it out diligently. Like we don't take everybody. There's not, a, we don't have enough time to take everybody. So like, that's no BS. Like yeah. if you're one foot in one foot out, like not sure then don't fill out the form. Like I want people that want to change their life and that we're, we're changing them. That's cool, man. All right. Well, there's this part of our show every week and it's where we ask you to leave our audience with a business growth hack, something that they can do within their business, or maybe in our case, a veteran who wants to start a business can do to see some type of transformation in their life. <laughs> business growth hack mine i will say how i started which was with with that virtual assistant you know i have a virtual assistant right now i have many of them that help me with things but i have a virtual assistant she's in the philippines she has a master's degree in logistics like honestly like i don't understand i don't know how to do excel spreadsheets like anything i can think of like there's someone out there that does it way better than me like we like, so I use virtual assistants, like mad talent. I don't have a freaking master's degree. <laughs> like, and it's just, so that's my business hack. Finding people, my who, not how Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy wrote a great book called who, not how listen to it on audible. It's not when you got to sit there and read and study, like put it on 1.5 X while you're running on the treadmill and listen to it on audible. Heck yeah, man. I, I think that's great advice. I feel like people I hear all the time say, I can't afford to hire an assistant. I can't like when I say I have an assistant, people are like, Oh, you're like, mm, Mr. Mr. Somebody. It's like, no dude, hop on Fiverr. There are so many talented individuals out there that can handle, you know, medial tasks and quite honestly, more advanced tasks 
that that happen overnight. So then you wake up in the morning, shit's done. Like that is so valuable to helping you get the most out of every day. I, I'm the same way. We built a website. It's called visittomball.com. It's basically a destination marketing website for the local city we live in for people to find restaurants, events, things like that. And when we first built it, I didn't want to have to try to go to every single local business and try to get them to claim their listing. Like I needed to launch this website with all of those listings already created so that when we launched this site, it was like a valuable resource out of the gate. So what did I do? I hired a a Philippines virtual assistant. She's, She's amazing. I still use her today. Something like five or six dollars an hour, right? And she went and put that entire list together of every business in Tomball in their individual categories for me in a specific format in a spreadsheet, which I was able to import into the software and pull in. Like that is amazing. That saved me so much time, right? So I think that's great advice, Brent. I think I wish I had an affiliate link for Fiverr. I probably do. I'll find it. I'm gonna drop my affiliate link because who knows? Like, hey, who cares? We're affiliate marketers, right? We'll take that Fiverr link. I'm going to drop it into the show notes because Fiverr is one of the great places to start. And a lot of times people think Fiverr and they think creative services only. Like I need a logo no. or something. Fiverr's got everything on there. Like, No, I just literally just replied to my guy on Fiverr right now. He's an architect building me renderings of a piece of land, yep. a piece of land I mentioned <laughs> that's next to the water. I want people to see that you could build an $8 trillion house yep. on this piece of land that you can get for a smoking hot deal, like anything and everything, like you can think of, like that could be done. It's seriously, someone I mean, else is better than you, and they can do it. I've got a guy named Daniel who's been a developer for me for five years that I met on Fiverr originally. I've got an, a, a girl from I think South Africa that's a like an author, like a ghostwriter. She's helped me write like manuscripts for books. I've got another designer oh, no. that I've used who does like ebook design. So if I want like you know kind of a nice word document turned into an ebook that looks really sexy. This this person does killer killer design work. Like I've never seen a better ebook than what they've done for me, and it's a fraction of the cost of going to somebody you know here in the here in the U.S. And I know sometimes people are like freaked out by that, but I promise you, it's a good experience, especially when you're using a platform like Fiverr, where there's like a controlled experience and the money's handled and you don't have to worry about any risk. Like it's top notch. Great great advice, Brent. Great advice. Yeah, I'm not giving them my social security number. No, or exactly. My, my debit yeah. card. Like my assistant has that, yeah. But also have her fingerprints. So, and if she finds me, like <laughs> I got the FBI that's gonna go after her. <laughs> Brent, man, I I sincerely uh, enjoyed this conversation, and I, honestly, outside of our conversation that we've had on the show today, I'm gonna like pick your brain on how I might get started in some of this because I'm certainly interested. You know, I think there's a couple other questions I have left around like. How much time do you have to have? Does it have to be your full-time job? Can it be a side hustle? You know, there's some of those conversations we can kind of dive into. But again, I I think for those of you out there that want to learn more, that want to see what's up, thelandsharks.com. That's where y'all can head over to their website. He's got an amazing podcast as well with a lot of value as well. So make sure you check it all out. And until next week, see you guys later. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Business Growth Hacks podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast so you never miss an episode. To get more marketing tips and tricks, follow Beefy Marketing on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Beefy Marketing. And to take your business to the next level, check out our website at www.beefymarketing.com.